Up fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Astride his great horse, Silver, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals through the length and breadth of the early western United States. The stories of his strength and daring have come down through the generations, for it was he, more than any other man, who brought law and order to the lawless frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's going to be trouble in Hillsdale! We've got to hurry! Hi, old Silver! Come on! Ezra Pike, a wheat farmer near the small western town of Hillsdale, was eating his evening meal with his wife, Martha, when suddenly she pointed out the window. Ezra! Huh? Just look outside. Well, I'll be more of them dead ratted cow punchers. Tramping down our wheat with their horses, and after you fenced that piece off. Cut my fence, that's what they did. Well, I'll show them. Now, don't start a fight, Ezra. Where'd I put my gun? Now, here it is. Oh, please, Ezra. You want I should let them blasted common get away with a thing like that? You can't fight for them. Now you stay inside and let me tend to this. But... Get out of there! Go on, get your horses out of my wheat! Hey, boy! Look what's waving a gun around! Careful, farmer! That thing will explode in your face and hurt you! <laughs> get out, I tell you! You low down coyotes! Get out! Who in blazes are you to give us orders? That's my wheat, them blasted critters of yours are stomping down! <laughs> Now, ain't that too bad? <laughs> Come a little closer, mister. There's something I'd like to tell you. Huh? What do you got to say? Just a little closer. I want to whisper it. That's it. No, no. No. I grabbed the farmer's gun, boy. Give me that back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if he can dance as good as he can yell. Come on, mister. Dance for us. <laughs> no, you doggone skunk. Here's another tune. <laughs> I'll have the law on you. I'll teach you. Ezra, what they do to you? You stay out of this, Marty. Get back in the house like I told you. You ain't through dancing already, I, Ezra. Shucks, you ain't even limbered up yet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Who shot that gun out of your hand? I did. Mess. What's the problem? Oh, what the son of a... He wants him. Oh, 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 scout. Oh, oh, that... oh, scout. Shoot at this man's feet again, and next time I'll do more than blast your gun away. Now look here. You can't do it. Ezra. What are these men doing in your wheat? Just trying to make trouble, that's what. We Get out, all of you. You're trespassing on another man's property. He's just a farmer. Until the cattlemen and farmers learn to respect each other's rights, neither one will prosper. Both sides have been going out of the way to start quarrels. He come at us with a gun. You likely deserved it. Now get out. Uh, come on, fellas. Maybe we'll meet up again sometime, Mask Fuller. And if we do, look out. Get up there. Get up there. Gosh, uh, stranger. I suppose you're an outlaw with that mask and all, but... But you sure showed up at just the right time. Not on I are not outlaws, Ezra. You can take my word for that. Mm, you don't act like one, and that's a fact. I was surprised to see cattlemen over this way. I thought most of the ranchers were over toward the hills. Uh-huh. They are. But common ride here by here every so often going to town. I see. Seems like it ain't enough with wheat prices way down, and old Thaddeus Gruber refusing to loan us farmers cash to see us through till harvest. But on top of that, them blasted cattlemen have got to be raising Ned. Thaddeus Gruber? 
Isn't he the banker in Hillsdale? That's the varmint. I've heard some things about him. Well, I'll bet you never heard nothing good. As a matter of fact, I haven't. What's been the trouble? Ain't no one told you about the way he's trying to steal our land? Steal it? Just the same as. I don't understand. Well, then I reckon he ain't been in these parts for long. I figured everybody knew about that. We were just riding through. Well, the banker's trying to make us all sell our land cheap. Because he knows that next year the railroad will be building through and then all this section will be worth ten times what it is now. But there's nothing to make you sell, is there? Yeah. What are us farmers going to do if we don't? Right now I got about ten dollars cash in the house to do me till this year winter wheat is ready to harvest. Can't you borrow money on the crop? <laughs> That's just it. Can't borrow it from the banker because the only thing he'll consider is buying at his price. Can't borrow it from any one of the other farmers because they're just as bad off as I am. But some of the cattlemen must have money. Uh, to loan to farmers? <laughs> you must be loco. Besides, they ain't so well off neither. No? We did all right over here, but, but where the cattlemen grazed their critters, there wasn't enough rain fell this year to fill your head. The grass is all burnt off, and they're doing their best to borrow cash to see them through. Then your only chance is the banker. <laughs> Which is the same as no chance at all. He aims to have our land. He's savage. We got to have cash to eat, so he's just sitting tied till we meet his terms. Otto, uh, I've changed my mind. We're not riding on. Me think you stay. Seems there's work for us to do here. Uh -huh. Work for you fellas to do? What do you mean? We're going to try to help you, Ezra. First, we'll call on the banker. But who are you? Come, what are you? Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Tonto! Silver! That mask! Golly, I must have been blind. Marthy! Hey, Marthy! What is it, Ezra? Land sake, what you so excited about now? Look, do you see that fellow riding away on that white horse? What's he to make a commotion about? What's he? Marthy, that's the Lone Ranger. Come in. You wanted me, Mr. Gruber? You didn't hear him sit down, Liam. Sure. Here at the cafe, he said you asked for me. Yeah, sit down. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong, is there? You didn't do what I sent you to do. Gosh, how'd you know? If you had, you'd come right to my office to tell me about it. Well, honest, Mr. Gruber, I've done my best. Then what was wrong? Yeah, you know them cattlemen. I know how to handle them, if that's what you mean. Which seems to be more than you do. But I've done like you told me. I've been a week traveling around a different ranch. Ain't doing no good at all. I tried. I ain't that them common got any use for the farmers. Matter of fact, they hate the ground they walk on. As soon as I hinted you might pay them to turn their critters loose in the wheat, they started cussing you out instead. Yeah, the fools. They thought of it themselves might have been different. They ain't got nothing again driving the farmers out. It's just that they won't take pay for it. And, and what? Well, remember, it's them that said it, not well, me. Let's shake it on with it. They said as how they wouldn't do nothing to help you out if they had to starve for it. They said that. Seems like you ain't any too well thought of, Ron. And by heavens, they will starve. I suppose they figure I don't know the ranges burn up. I suppose when I ask a favor of them, they turn me down. I'm to loan them cash when they ask for it. I don't know. Well, I won't. I want them fool farmers out of this country before there's others from outside coming around and offering them more cash than I am. Sure, I savvy. Farmers having no cash, and I'll see if they don't get any. Uh -huh. But they're just stubborn enough to hang on long as they can see a crop ahead of them. But they won't be able to stick it out till harvest. Of course they won't. Didn't I just say I wanted their land before I have to meet the price of outsiders coming here to buy? Yeah, but... Now look here, Liam. Huh? If the cattlemen won't run the farmers out for pay, then they're going to do it for nothing. For nothing? They're all the time fighting with the farmers, ain't they? Sure, but I... Well, this time there's going to be a fight bust out. A fight that's going to have every farmer around here so blame anxious clean out of these parts, he won't be able to sell fast enough. Hey, Mr. Gruber, I bet that could be done. I know it can. All you got to do is stir up the cattlemen without letting them know you're doing it a purpose. Sure. Talk about how the farmers are breaking up the stock so his grass can't grow no more. And tell them the farmers grabbed off all the best land. <laughs> Make them think they're burnt out this year because the homesteaders shoved them back on worthless range. Keep prodding at them. Get them to thinking all their trouble comes from the farmers. In one of these days, it'll be a ruckus bust loose that'll tear the top off things. The way things are, all them common need is somebody to get them started. And you're going to be that fella. Here's some cash. Take that and go over to the cafe. Every time you see a coming, buy him a drink. Get him talking. And if you do your work right, before the week's up, things will be humming. I'll start right now. Give me that cash. This time you're planning things right, Mr. Gruber. You can't hire cattlemen to do your dirty work. But this way you can get the same results by making them think they're fighting for their sales. You want to get started? Sure. 
Now that you know how things pan out, Mr. Gruber. Get back inside. What the? Get back. Hey, miss. A hold up. Come on, Carter. Uh, you can't get away. Hold up. Then let me go. You're not going to leave to spread a warning. Which one of you is a banker? Uh, I am. And you're the man I want to see. I've heard some stories about you, and I hope they're not the truth. What right have you Listen got Listen to me. Is it true you've refused to loan money to the farmers? Uh, what if I have? You won't give them money to live on unless they sell out their holdings? I run my business to please myself. While doing that, you're forcing the farmers to lose everything they have. I've offered them a price. A price that's only a tenth of what they'll be able to get when the railroad is built. Well, it ain't my fault. You're a banker. Most men of your profession do everything they can to build up their community. But instead, you'd rather ruin the people of this district so that you can make an unfair profit. This is my bank, and I'll do what I want with it. And you won't reconsider? I not only ain't changing my mind, but I'm going to set the law on you for threatening me like this. And serve you right. I haven't threatened you yet. You but won't get You a... can take this for a threat if you wish. You can't scare me. There's going to be justice done here. Your scheme isn't going through. How are you going to stop it? I don't know yet, but I'll find a way. Unless you decide to be fair. Get out. We're going. Come, Tonto. And if you show your face around here again, you'll be jailed. Don't try to follow us. Who in blazes was he? Gunman hired by the farmers, that's all. But what but was it? But a dozen more like him couldn't keep me from running my affairs the way I please. You hear that? They've gone. Which is just what you're going to do. Leave. Get to the cafe like you started to before. And I'll stop at the sheriff's office on the way and tell him about the masked man and the redskin. Same 30 on the cattlemen. Mr. Gruber, here's something you can tie to. I'll get him started. And when the finish comes, them farmers had better watch out. Lem's efforts to stir up the cattlemen against the farmers met with almost instant success. The cattlemen, who felt themselves the natural enemies of the homesteaders had been further embittered by the fact that while the country where they ranged their cattle was dry and parched, the wheat fields to the farmers had enjoyed an abundance of rain. But Lem, not satisfied until he'd spurned the cowmen to action, continued his campaign. Fill him up again, barkeep. Jack, the way I look at it, you cattlemen have got a raw deal. You think I don't know that? Then why don't you fellas do something about it? Huh? Well, maybe we will. We'll stand for just so much, Lem, and then the fur flies. Wheat where cows ought to be grazing. It's your own fault, Gort. Yeah? You cattlemen ain't forgot how to handle shooting irons, have you? We ain't. There's folks gonna find it out right soon. Tom, you're the leader of the cowmen. Sure I am. And if you want action, it's up to you to start it. Run the farmer! Oh, they got our range! Stole it from us by blowing the rats under! Run the farmer's out! They stole our range! Drive them out with lead! Cattle starving! Stole our range! Cattle starving! Hold it! Fellas, it's time we done something. Yeah, right. And I don't mean tomorrow, I mean today. And I don't mean with talk, I mean with land. So get out your guns and oil them up. We cattlemen are taking back what them farmers stole. Good job. <laughs> Before the night's over, the cowmen will be taken over. <laughs> and after they've taken over, <laughs> then I'll take over from them. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The cattlemen aroused by Lem Nugent prepared to attack the farmers. And the farmers, learning what was threatened, gathered in town to defend themselves as best they could. The streets of Hillsdale were loud with angry voices and the clatter of hoops. But hidden by the shadows between two buildings, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the gathering storm. Something's got to be done to stop them, Tonto. Uh, soon there'll be plenty of trouble. I expect this is the banker's work. And that's what me think. I noticed that man who was in his office when we called on him. Him named Lem. For the past few days, Lem has talked with every cattleman who's come to town. Uh, and wherever Lem has been, there's been talk against the farmers. That's right. A couple does break out. Many of the farmers will sell. Most of them are brave men, Tonto. They're not as familiar with horses and guns as the ranchers are. They never stand a chance in the fight between the two factions. Uh, good, Tonto. There's Ezra Pike. He's the man we helped when we first came here. Him good fellow. He seems to be the leader of the farmers. And there... A fellow named Tom Roberts. The leader of the ranchers. Uh, Get on your horse, Tonto. Uh, what what we do? Steady, Silver. <laughs> Kimosabe, if the fight is ever going to break out, now's the time. Uh, Ezra and Tom each represent their own side. If they talk things over reasonably, there may be peace. Them look plenty mad. That's justice. They lose their heads, but they won't compromise. This whole town will go fighting mad. That's right. And that's what we've got to stop. And Tonto, trouble starts. You take Ezra. Tonto, do that. And I'll say, Tom, get Ezra on your horse. Make him go with you. Uh-huh. Then head for our camp. Tonto, they're getting into a quarrel. Are you right now? That's it, Kimo. Sabi, ride. Come on, get him up, scout. Out of our way! Watch out for the horses. Hey, we'll get trampled down. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what are you doing? You're coming with me. Hey, look at here for? You'll learn in a moment. Ezra, I want to talk to you, too. Yeah. I thought you was a friend of mine. I'd like to be a friend to both of you. You got a fine way of showing it. Hold on. But look here, I've why got you... a few things to say, and then you can both talk. But you're going to listen to me first. Well? Tom, you've allowed yourself to be used by the banker. He's trying to get the farmers to sell out. And you and your friends are helping him. That's not so. You probably haven't realized it. You haven't allowed yourself to think it over. But it's true, nevertheless. But what's that got to do with me? Ezra, the homesteaders are at fault, too. Perhaps not as much as the cattlemen. But they've done their share to keep the quarrels going just the same. We're going to see if the cattlemen and farmers can't work together instead of against each other. Several days went by, and during that time, Thaddeus Gruber waited anxiously for the outbreak between ranchers and farmers that never came. We see him now in his office as Lem enters. Mr. Gruber, something's going to happen, all right. Can't you find out what? Nobody's doing any talking. That's what makes me more sure than ever that this fight ain't over. Yeah? It's when they quit shouting and everything seems quiet that things most usually bust loose. I've got to be more sure than that. Well... Cattlemen are dodging the farmers, and the farmers are dodging them. Uh, they act sort of like fellas that are just waiting a signal to raise a roof. Well, if they ain't going to fight, I want to know it. And I can plan some other way to make the farmers sell. They'll fight. I got a notion the cattlemen are just waiting to figure the best way to start it. Uh, hear anything more about that mask trail in this part? Nope. Just that they let Tom and Ezra go. Uh, they say who the mask man is. Tom said he was just some outlaw. Took him away thinking ahead cash. Oh, there's Tom now. Coming here for a loan, I'll bet. Well, he won't get it. There's some others with him. All ranchers. Come in. Afternoon, Mr. Grover. Can we see you? I ain't loaning no cash. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Mm, come in. Howdy, Lem. Howdy, Tom. Howdy, fellas. Howdy. 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 Howd
State your business. We was just wondering if that proposition Lem put up to us some time ago was still open. What proposition was that? You recollect it, don't you, Lem? You mean... Say, Mr. Gruber, about ruining a farmer's crop. Ain't that it, fellas? That's it. Kind of late about agreeing to it, ain't you? Well, things haven't changed none. You still want that wheat land, don't you? Mm. And it's worth cash to you if we run our cows over the farmer's grain, ain't it? Well, it might be. And for cash, we'll do that thing. Well, sure, I save you. First, when Lamb asked you to do that, you got riled. Now you turn right around and ask me. Well, the fact is, Mr. Gruber, we just about got to do it. Got to? Uh-huh. We ain't going to have no winter pasturage for our cows, so if we're to pull through, we'll need cash. Which same you won't loan us. So we've decided to talk things over and get even with the farmers. And at the same time, get paid for doing it. Then we're agreeable. You don't get the notion when that wheat lands mine, you ranchers are going to get any good from it. Ah, uh, we ain't figured on that. Cash is all we want. <laughs> well, then maybe we can make a deal. But there's one thing, Mr. Gruber. Hmm? We ain't going to do this for just a few dollars. You're going to pay us good. You're set to make yourself rich if the farmers sell out, and that could be worth plenty to you. <laughs> and we won't have no trouble about terms. And if you wouldn't mind putting it all down in writing... In writing? Uh, you think I'm a fool? I'll put nothing down in writing. And I'll keep my word. Mr. Gruber, I don't think your word's good for a thing. Why, but you... But we'll take it. Because you know if you go back on it, your life wouldn't be worth a red penny. I won't, I tell you. Good enough. And it's agreed. The minute you fellas run your critters into that wheat, you'll get your pay. But if you back out, you won't get nothing. Back out? Why, we wouldn't think of it. <laughs> Wait till the farmers see them cows. <laughs> Once on their land, the damage is done. <laughs> yeah. Now, how much cash do you men want? <laughs> deal was made, and Lem, as the banker's representative, went with the ranchers to supervise the roundup. But the cattlemen followed their agreement with the banker to the letter. Everywhere throughout the scorched range, men routed out calves, steers, and doggies, and drove them into one great herd. Get moving, you bastard clerk! Come on! Move along! Get along with you! By twos and threes and dozens, wearing every brand known to that district, the cattle arrived from all directions. Cow hands raced their alert cow ponies to keep the herd from scattering. Tom Roberts, sitting astride a bay horse, shouted orders to the crew while Lem sat beside him. Red, get over there and ride point. Pete, watch them steers. Keep them from breaking loose. Uh, Lem, I'm telling you, this is a job. How soon you'll be ready to start the drive, Tom? We'll be on our way by noon. Oh, that ain't an hour yet. Just the same, we'll be ready. And Lem. Yeah? You tell the banker he better have that cash ready. Because just as soon as these critters drive them through the farmer's fences, we're collecting. He'll have the cash for you. I'd hate to think what had happened to him if he didn't, after all the work we've gone through. If you're sure you'll be started when you say, I'll ride to town. And by the time we get Mr. Kluber and we ride back again, you should be most there. We will be. Well, then I'll get going and I'll meet you there. Well, get up. Get along there. Come on, get up. The great herd was driven down from the hills toward the fields of green winter wheat until at last it reached the fences built by the farmers. Jack! Mort! What is it, Tom? Are the fences cut? Cut the fences and keep them critters moving. When they get inside, let them spread out. Then go ahead and cut any other fences you come to. Right! Come on, Mort! I'll ride with you! Let's go! From the other direction, confident of success, the banker and Lem raced to meet the rancher. There they are. They beat us here. Only there ain't no farmers around. Most likely don't know what's happened yet. They'll be along soon enough. <laughs> this is one time soon enough. Won't be soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's Tom Roberts. Tom! Hey, Tom! Oh, hey, hold up for a second. Cash for all the ranchers? Uh-huh. You seem in a mighty big hurry to turn it over. Because I don't want the farmer seeing me pay you. Here, count it out. I'll do that. It's all there. Your word ain't keeping me from making sure. Mm. Yep, that's it all right. Then come on, Lim. 
We've seen the cattlemen did what they promised. Now, let's clear out. Just hold on. Hmm? Here come some other folks I'd like you to meet. Oh, it's the farmer. There's Ezra with them. And say, look, the masked man. In the red skin. We're all set, stranger. <laughs> but what's this all mean? You might as well go ahead and finish the deal, Tom. <laughs> I'll do that. Here you are, Ezra. Here's the cash we promised you. Thank you, Tom. That'll come in mighty handy. Hold on, you can't. Is something wrong? Tom can't give that cash to Ezra. That's my cash. What's the Mr. idea of giving... You said you'd pay us to drive our cows into these fields. We did exactly that. But I tell you... There was nothing in the bargain to say that the cattlemen couldn't use that money to pay the farmers. Pay the farmers for what? For pasturing their cattle in these fields. <laughs> What's that? No one has broken his word. There's nothing you can object to. It was a trick. They tricked us. Our cattle needed fodder, and there's nothing to beat young green wheat for that. <laughs> and us farmers needed cash so that we could hold on to our land till the railroad comes through. But neither the farmers nor us cattlemen having the cash for what we wanted... Why, the masked fella showed us a way to make you pay the cost, Mr. Groover. I'll have the law on him. But it wouldn't have cost you money if you hadn't gone outside the law to cheat these people. Why, but, you... Mr. Groover, that ain't all the masked man done. Hmm? He showed us that sometimes it pays more for ranchers and farmers to work together than it does to be fighting all the time. I'll kid you. You'll do nothing of the kind. But I'll tell you what I would do if I was you. Uh... I'd pack my things and hightail out of here. Because after the things you've tried to do, I'm afraid you won't find the climate very healthy for you. If you savvy what I mean. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.